Welcome to the Wander Learn Show. I'm your host, Franz Tapon. This is the second part of a four-part series with Palais Beau, the host of the Radio Vagabond podcast. In this episode, we talk about why you should revisit countries. It's a fun concept. You know, a lot of people sometimes have a bad experience. And was it you or was it the country? And a lot of times it is you. So keep your mind open and go check it out again because maybe the second time around will be better. Sometimes the weather is bad or some other mishap. I encourage you to go to the Radio Vagabond podcast to subscribe to it and also become a patron at patreon.com slash ftapon. And now, Pallet Bo. Welcome, folks. I'm talking to Bond, the Radio Vagabond. <laughs> Pallet Bo, <laughs> tell us what you've been up to since Thailand. And tell us a little bit about yourself, actually. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I'm from Denmark. I have only one passport, the Danish passport, but I'm not a resident. I don't live in Denmark. I don't live anywhere for eight years now. I've been a full-time nomad, completely without a home base, and uh, I travel around the world. I say that I'm on a quest to visit every country in the world. I'm on 124 right now. If it happens, it happens, but um, it's I'm, I'm just enjoying myself and uh, and traveling around the world. And I do a travel podcast as I'm doing it uh, called The Radio Vagabond. Everybody wants to know why your name is Palais and what does it mean in other languages? And why did your mom torture you with that name? Yeah, it's a name. I wouldn't say it's a common name, especially not anymore. Nobody names their kids Pala anymore in Denmark. No, it was more common back when they gave it to me back in the 60s. And uh, nothing special. It doesn't mean anything in Danish. And then when I started traveling, first of all, nobody can say my name. When I say that my name is Pala, people always lean in and say, oh, sorry, what? Of course. Uh, more if I say my name is Pala Bo, it's like, okay, that rolls off the tongue. And they, yeah. I, I rarely get the question, well, what we say? Oh, Pala Bo, I can say that. <laughs> it's weird. And then at some point I was at a nomad cruise where we had name tags and it just said Pala on mine. And there were an Italian guy at the bar. He saw that and he's started laughing and I said why are you laughing stay there stay there and then he went and got his Italian friend and pointed at my and then they were both on the floor laughing and I said why are you laughing and then he he did like this with his hands uh, up into bows and said because uh, it means a bulls a balls bulls balls <laughs> god and I I thought, oh, that's not great, but at least it's got some cojones. <laughs> that's true. That's uh, true. So I, for a year, I, yeah, it means bulls, balls. And then exactly. I met another Italian and said, no, it just means balls. Okay. Uh, and, and in fact, we have a saying in it, Italian, que palle, which means, oh, that's so boring. Basically, oh, okay, that okay, sucks okay. balls. And, okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah, que palle. It's a, <laughs> and every time what I'm in Italy. What about other languages? Yeah, well, then I got to Albania, and uh, the guy that I knew there, the, he, he refused. He just called me Bo. He said, uh, I'm not going to call you that other name. You mean Pala? I said, shh, 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 shh. It's a very, very rude way of saying dickhead. Oh, wow. Especially in Tirana. Oh, wow. Uh, it's kind of a slang for... Wow. It's, and it's so rude. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and I was so actually funny. interviewed by Albanian TV, and uh, the, it's, uh, I saw the Facebook post. It was all in Albania, and then my mm-hmm. name was there. So I put that in, in Google Translate. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, it said, Mr. Digbo has been traveling the world for... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing is that, I mean, at least in Albanian, no, I mean, we, they don't know that, right? But in English, we know that Dick what it means yeah. and we still have anybody who's called yeah. richard is often called dick yeah i've wondered like why dick i never cheney. really got that yeah. yeah dick cheney i mean yeah. like what dick nixon i don't really get it uh, <laughs> yeah and I, i've also been told that it's close to clown in finnish and the germans say pillepalle which means nothing of importance <laughs> so i'm basically the boy named sue okay uh, to give you a johnny cash reference uh, that's so old so we met in Thailand for a conference. Yeah, we met the first time in Spain for right. a conference, and then we met in Albania, no, right. in uh, Armenia, right. in Yerevan. And then again in Thailand, Yeah, or Tibex. What have you been up to since then on your quest? You and I, that's an, one thing is interesting, we don't just have two podcasts together. We have almost the identical country count. I've got about 125, you're 124. Oh, oh. Yeah, we're like, we're neck on neck. Yeah, and you only count UN nations on that? 
Yeah, I guess. Taiwan, I mean, Kosovo, Taiwan is, I, that, Kos- is that counted? I haven't gone to Taiwan, so but I have gone to Kosovo, and I think I count that uh-huh. as, as my... Li- then we're exactly the same. Then we're exactly yeah, the same. Because right. if I count Kosovo, I'm on 125. Okay, got it. Uh, All right, we're exactly- and you didn't count Greenland, because you were I just in count. Greenland. Yeah, no, correct. No, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, after that, and I'm, I'm also very curious about to hear what, what you've been up to. Uh, after that, I stayed in Thailand for a month. That year had been a crazy year for me because I'd been to, I, I stayed in 105 different beds uh, that year huh. uh, in different places. So packed wow. and unpacked 105 times. And then that was including a full month after that. I went to Koh Lanta in Thailand. I don't, I don't know what's more impressive that you did 125 different beds in a year or that you actually kept track of it. <laughs> I, I have a spreadsheet. I'm a bit of a geek. You are such a I fucking a bit nerd. Of a geek. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, yeah, and then I went to Australia, uh, my first time in Australia, and uh, spent three months there. Uh, did a lot of the West Coast. Also did um, a two-day scuba diving trip in the Great Barrier Reef. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it was, I was on a boat for mm. three days, so nice. eight eight dives. And, and does it live up to the hype? Yeah, yeah. When Is it the best place ever? I would really? say so. Yeah, wow. yeah, and uh, I no bleaching going on. N- no, and when so people say that it's it's highly exaggerated that it's dead. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there are some parts, but uh, I told you the global warming is a Chinese hoax. Mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure there are some, and I'm sure it's struggling, but it, it's still a lot. Like it's massive, but yeah. uh, so we, we it, hence it, the name Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. yeah. And actually, the same year later, I dove in the second biggest barrier reef in uh, out of Belize. Uh, so I did that in the same year. Now, after after Australia, I went on a cruise to New Zealand. Uh, mm. And um, first time there, first time there as well. Mm. And uh, I did a two week road trip uh, of the South Island, uh, mm. which was unbelievable. Yeah, really, really great. Um, yeah, and then I flew back to Europe uh, for another TBEX conference in Greece. Uh, roamed a bit around, took a nomad cruise over to uh, Brazil and then down to Buenos Aires uh, on New Year's Eve. Uh, And I started this year uh, with three months in Buenos Aires before, believe it or not, getting back to Europe uh, for another TBEX. Uh, (laughs) But I did a a cruise back from Buenos Aires to Italy. Um, And then I went to Istanbul, uh, Lebanon, Syria, uh, Have you been to all the European countries? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did Iceland. That's my last a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. uh, including Kosovo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Syria trip was amazing, uh, mm-hmm. and then I did a trip of the stands: Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. And then I went here. I was supposed to go to another TPEX in Puerto Rico uh, with a stopover in New York, but. Um, because of my Syria trip, I wasn't allowed to, to go there. They don't like the Syria stamp in my passport. This is the hypocrisy of the U.S. government. A U.S. citizen can go to Syria, yeah. but they don't want a non-U.S. citizen yeah. going to Syria. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Uh, so I went straight here to Toronto. That was my plan to go here after Puerto Rico. But um, mm. now I'm here and I actually, I don't know where I'm going next, and I don't know when. I have this feeling all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the normal course of my entire life. Yeah. Because you have a little bit of structure, because you're so heavily involved with TBEX. Yeah, I, I do the TBEX podcast, so that's right. why I go to them all the time. Right. And so, that's why I was supposed to be in Puerto Rico. Right, so it creates a structure, is what I'm saying, to yeah. your life to a certain yeah. extent. That like, puts me in a continent, and then I stay roaming around there around for there. a bit. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and so you, where are most of your countries, I uh, imagine they're African countries that are mostly missing for your 70-something countries to go? I've, I've done half of the African countries. I've okay. done, so I've what, done quite a bit. So, so, uh, but that's still about at least 25 countries. Then. Yeah, yeah. So about half of your countries that you're missing. Yeah, I think maybe. I've done 26 African countries. A third of your countries are in Africa. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. And 25% of the countries in the world are in Africa. So no, no, uh, but I'm saying a yeah, third of the me, country yeah. for you for yeah, your yeah, remaining right. seven. Yeah. And then I have... I know you're not uh, that some, obsessed with n- the 193. No, if it happens, it happens. And mm. if it doesn't, if I'm 95 and still need 10 more to go, I still, it's still my plan, young man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <so. laughs> uh, so yeah, if if it ha- it's more about the journey, not the not the goal. But it's it's always fun to say that I it, it's it's what I'm aiming for. You don't say that out loud. That I I do say that I'm I'm aiming, but I'm not in any rush. No, I take my time. Same for me. I, I, same for I me. Figure it out. Yeah. Um, 
and but I do definitely want to do it by, you know. Yeah. Anyway, but I'm definitely not in a rush. I mean, for God's no. sakes, I spent eight years in Africa. For God's sakes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not, I could have seen the whole planet by now. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it, it's so true. So uh, yeah, a lot of those that I'm missing are the uh, the harder uh, oh, the, micronations in the Pacific. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, also how many are there? About a dozen there. Yeah, uh, also quite expensive. What about Caribbean? They have I've, quite a few. I've done quite a few, but still need a lot there. Okay, yeah. yeah, so it's just basically scattered all over the place. Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of and in South America, I need the uh, the Guianas, the three uh, two small UN nations, and uh, French Guiana and uh, Venezuela. And Ecuador for some reason. Mm. So Ecuador is high on my list now. Right. So after Thailand, how about you? I after Thailand, it was much simpler than your itinerary. I mainly spent it in Africa. Definitely went to Southern Africa. Yeah. Several countries. Yeah, in you Southern were more Africa. or less based in Morocco, weren't you? I was in Morocco for a long time. Yeah. Then I was in Southern Africa for a while, and then I went to East Africa, like Ethiopia mm -hmm. and South Sudan. Which was very interesting because the only time I went to South Sudan was I climbed the tallest mountain, but secretly and illegally through Uganda. So I went there and I climbed the tallest mountain, but I didn't actually see the country. Uh -huh. So this time around was nice, uh -huh. but I still didn't see as much of South Sudan as I would have liked. I just was near uh, Juba, which is the capital. And have you been to South Sudan? No. Okay. No. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go, but it's just, I would like to see more of it. Yeah. Not, not just Juba and nearby Juba. But everybody go see the Mondori tribe or whatever they're called. The, yeah. the, anyway, but it's fascinating. But Ethiopia how, was fascinating the second time around too. Yeah. How come you How come you chose to go back to some of the places? Uh, obviously, to see more, but uh, there's it's a great big Sometimes world out I there. Sometimes I guide people, and also I just really uh, need to see second sides of it. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you've been to countries so many times, oh, right? Yes. Especially like European countries. My you've third time here in Toronto. There you go. Uh, yeah. So. And so you do see sometimes different sides. Yeah. And so it's 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 fun to, to revisit countries every once in a while. And I'm writing my book. I keep having this fantasy of writing my book in Africa, but I haven't really been that great at fulfilling this fantasy. Um, but I still have it. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do that in the future. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll finish it finally in Africa. Who mm -hmm. knows? But that's it. And then then I came to um, Canada. In Toronto for since April, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, yeah. You said that the thing about going back to countries that you've been to before and you loved. I also have some countries that are nothing special for me, and say, yeah, no. You don't uh, want to uh, go back. No, and then I meet someone uh, saying, Ooh. "What do you mean? It's great there." Right. For a long time, when people always we always get the question, "What's your favorite country yeah. and what's your least favorite country?" Yeah. And f for my favorite, I would always say uh, South Africa, and especially Cape Town. Oh, wow. And for my least favorite, I, for a long time, I said, "Oh, Mauritania." Uh, yeah, and, that's one and of then, my favorite. <laughs> see, that's one of see. my favorite. <laughs> uh, and I think it was you that said that, and okay. also Rick Casarian, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the founder of um, uh, Extraordinary ATF. Travel Fest. Uh, he also said, "Oh, it's so great there." So now I want to go back to the countries that made that I didn't really like to right. see what did I miss. That's great. Um, that's uh, fabulous. And do you have? Because I, as far as I remember, you didn't have the greatest experience in Ghana. Before I went to Ghana, I think you let me read the draft of your chapter about Ghana, oh, that could and be. it was not. Oh, you're right. I had positive. five misfortunes in Ghana. You're that, right. Yeah. You have a very good memory. You know what I did in Ghana better than I do. Yes, you're right. I did have a, five misfortunes that all hit me in Ghana, but somehow I was able to compartmentalize that and separate yeah. my shitty experience with the country. I don't want to blame uh -huh. the Ghanaians uh -huh. for my misfortune. No. It wasn't. It was just a bunch of bad and luck. I, that I happened totally to me. fell in love with Ghana yeah. when I went there, yeah. uh, and so I want to go back because I love it. But I want to go back to Mauritania because I didn't like it. I plan to go back to Ghana myself. Uh, this guy named Skyler and I want to drive from Cote d'Ivoire all the way down to South Africa. And so we're going through Ghana again. But unfortunately, he drives very fast, so we don't spend much time. But that's another <laughs> story. That's actually, I don't know if I did that after Thailand or not. I think I did. I did drive from Morocco all the way to Liberia, or Cote d'Ivoire, actually, all the way to Cote d'Ivoire. Wow. That was a fun little trip. Um, West Africa is always a challenge. Um, but yeah, Guinea-Bissau is a place that I'm never... Did you go to there? Yeah. So to me, I just never fell in love with Guinea-Bissau. Did you? I, I, maybe you went to I, the islands. I, no, I had, I had a great experience. I was also super lucky. I booked a random Airbnb and it turned out that the people owning that place were Danish uh, mm. doctors uh, wow. with a big 
um, um, research group um, mm. um, working on um, uh, vaccines and mm. stuff like that. And I got to be a part of that community. So I, I got to hang out with a lot of local people and not just Westerners, uh, Western doctors, but some of those, but also some of the locals there. So I got a more immersive experience than I would have gotten otherwise. Okay. Uh, so, so you met a lot of locals. Yeah, yeah. But you don't speak Portuguese. No, no. But you, somehow you felt connected. Yeah, and and, and also the, I got to hang out with those Danish, Danish people, people, and are, uh, right. yeah, and they. But then I mean I understand that, but but I feel like when you're you're hanging out with expats, it's a it's an important experience because the expats have a foot in both worlds, mm -hmm. so they're always fascinating. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're not really. No, with the locals. but like I said, I, uh, they, they took me to events where there were some locals, locals as right, well. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. The challenge, though, I find like if I don't have a, the linguistic connection, yeah. then I feel like I'm missing yeah. like 80% yeah. of the experience yeah. Yeah. if I can't somehow communicate with them. If I could choose one superpower, it would be to be able to speak every language. We're getting there. I yeah. think like in a couple of years. I mean, already Google Translate. There's yeah. a lot of apps that allow you to do that. Have you used those apps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. on the fly? And, 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 but what I hear is that now what's coming is, or it's maybe it's already there, is like you can have a special app and then earbuds in each person. Yeah. And then it would be translated instantly. On the fly, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, if it's not here, it will be. Yeah. Like by 2026, yeah. Yeah. it should be there for sure. Yeah. It's fascinating. Well, then, then you um, you came here to Toronto to house sit and do other stuff, and uh, yeah, if, if, and I'm if, writing my book, trying to fi yeah. finish that fucking thing. Um, it's a beast. I don't think I'm going to write a book after this. I don't recommend writing a book. <laughs> you think podcasting is hard? No, but writing a book is worse. It just takes forever, and it's so not lucrative at all. Yeah. It, and nobody reads books anymore, so it's just, yeah. it's a thankless. Uh, endeavor. And that ends this episode of the Wander Learn podcast, where we explore travel, technology, and transformation. If you'd like to see the show notes with links to what we've talked about, go to wanderlearn.com and click on this episode. If you'd like to connect with me, just remember F Tapon. That's my first initial and my last name. F Tapon is always my social media username. My website is ftapon.com. Do you want to leave me an anonymous voicemail where you can make a comment or ask a question? Then go to speakpipe.com slash ftapon. Furthermore, if you'd like to get rewarded for supporting my projects, then go to patreon.com slash ftapon. That's where you can pick up some remarkable rewards for as little as $2 a month. Now, five quick favors. Number one, subscribe to the Wander Learn podcast. Two, download it. Three, share it. Four, review it. And five, sign up for my newsletter at wanderlearn.com. Our theme music was composed by Eric Stratman. This is France Tapon encouraging you to wander and learn. Mm -hmm.